put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Street Kings Movie Review. Tom Lullo is a dirty cop, and in South Central Los Angeles, you sometimes have to be. He isn't really out to just... You, you feel like he's looking out for regular people, though. And when his former partner becomes a snitch, he he intends to have some words with him, maybe break his jaw, but his former partner Washington gets killed, and the more Tom looks at it, the less this, the, the more suspicious it all looks. And in the middle of all this, there's a internal affairs cop who is trying to get him to rat out. And yeah. And I think that's about what I should give away of the plot. I should maybe also say that Tom is a vice cop. Yes. By Squad. The second movie, directed by David Iyer, and this one not written by him, but rather by Kurt Wimmer of the of Equilibrium and the somewhat less favored Ultraviolet, and based on a story by James Elroy more known for his novels, none of which I've read, than his contributions to the silver screen, although as far as movies go, probably the most well-known is he wrote L.A. Confidential. And Jamie Moss also helped write this. And as with Harsh Times, and in general, just, you know, David Iyer wrote and directed Harsh Times, and he also wrote Training Day, and also SWAT, but that one doesn't have it quite as much as the others. This is very much about South Central Los Angeles, and it really, you can really tell that David Iyer spent some of his youth there. He completely understands the the sort of culture, the the subculture going on there. And when he makes these movies about it, the slang, the dialogue, the characters, the entire environment is just really incredibly dealt with, and it's, it, it makes for some very compelling social realism about the rather crime-ridden area for those not already familiar with it. I should perhaps say about the slang, in this one it does get a bit... <laughs> I don't know, over, overdone at times? I do love it so, though, but there, I can't completely claim that it's entirely credible in this, but just, 
if if you like just you know very verbal, very much dialogue, very very. I don't know how quite what words to use. It's well, definitely neo noir. This this kind of you know metaphors and these big phrases. It's it's they're not just using regular words. They're everything said has this extra punch to it. If if you like that sort of thing, you're gonna love this. And, yeah, in general, the film is neo-noir. There are no real good guys. Everyone's somewhat bad. There are shades of grey to every character. I know this has nothing to do with that s &M book. The, the tone is bleak throughout. It's, it's, a, it's a very gritty film. It really captures just L.A. by night and puts you right there in the ghetto. It helps that some of the people cast, I mean, this has an amazing cast, and it's mostly made up of really talented actors, and then you have to further add legitimacy to the, the you know, in addition to David Iyer, you have just a handful of rappers and the like to really sell that this is, you know, you've got Common in the game playing gangsters, and it's just, it's, it's perfect. You've got Cedric the Entertainer in there, it's just, yeah, perfectly chosen. I feel like I should say something about every single star in the cast because they all do really, really well. Keanu Reeves is, you know, stars as Tom Ludlow and he's not the best actor out there, but this is the kind of role that he can really do well. This kind of jaded anti-hero. It yeah, he just really you you can tell on his face. He he wears these in, in the film he's supposed to have been on the force for like 17 years. You can see that on his face. You can see just night after night of one of the worst areas as, as far as crime goes. And, yeah, all there on his face, night after night, not quitting, keeping on fighting to, you know. You've got Forrest Whitaker plays his, his boss, the, the police captain, I think I'm not good of rank. And he is just really... You, you see this guy and you, you understand, you know, he, he commands people, he commands respect. And, yeah, I, I don't want to talk too much about his character. I feel like you should, you should see it for yourself. But, yeah, and, and there's also this, this great, there's a sort of locker room mentality to the Vice Squad. You see that in the very early scenes, so I'm not giving anything away. And they're all just perfectly cast. They're not in it all that much, but every time they do show up, it's it's Jay Moore, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, who I've always rather liked. The You've got John Corbett, Amori Nolasco, you know, Sucre from Prison Break. I think that might just about cover it. And they're just, they're all perfectly cast. You believe them all as these vice cops. And when they're giving each other a hard time. And all, all this slang they have to deliver to each other. Hugh Laurie is the internal affairs agent. And... 
it's, it's not really a surprise by now that the man can put on a, an utterly convincing American accent, but he's also just, you, you really get a sense that he, he is a dangerous presence. He, he really is going to just take them all down for being dirty. Terry Crews, this is the second night in a row I've had to confess, the dude can act. I, I don't know what they're doing in the, maybe I have to rewatch The Expendables, maybe I've been, maybe the, the bad acting of the rest of the main cast, except maybe, you know, Statham, kind of drags him down, but I will say he, he's, especially in the second one, he really is the charm of the movie, he is the most appealing part, so, yeah, he's, he plays Washington, and he does really, really well. Let's see, the... I can, oh, Chris Evans, almost forgot. I used to hate Chris Evans. I admit that it was, at, at first it was unfair because it was his role in Not Another Teen Movie, and nobody came out looking good from that movie. But then, he was in Fantastic Four, playing a character I, to start with, don't even like. You know, the, the Human Torch. Yeah, when I watched this movie, I decided to give the dude another chance. And since then, he's impressed me a lot. He plays this rookie cop, who Ludlow is trying to, he's, he plays Discant. And, or, or Ludlow refers to him, Disco, and he is investigating Washington's shooting, and you just, you, you get this sense of there being, he's, he's clearly very devoted to the job, and yeah, again, I, I don't want to give too much weight, but he's, he's really cool as well. The movie has, it keeps to a very fast pace. It's 99 minutes, not counting the end credits, 104 width, and the tension is steadily rising throughout, leading to a third act, which is all kinds of awesome. The, just the, the twists in this movie are really, really well done. You, you just keep getting it. Again, not knowing that much about James Elroy, as far as I can tell, that is his big contribution to this thing. That it just it keeps you guessing, and then when you finally, when you realize what's really going on, it really floors you, and you you walk away. I first watched this movie when it came out in two thousand eight, and I have not forgotten the twist since then. It just completely really got into me. And the, the, the action is really, really good. It's, it's the smart kind of action that we've been seeing more of, thankfully, after all the dumb action that we've gotten for decades. I, I love dumb action, but sometimes it's nice to have a more realistic approach. And admittedly, some of what you see in this movie is not entirely credible, especially with, it's, it's got the, how can that one character be that consistently lucky kind of factor sometimes. I almost call it Hollywood. It, this is not a mainstream movie. It is really, really nasty and gritty. It's like Fox Searchlight, you know? It's not a mainstream kind of... David Iyer got to make the movie the way he wanted to, and it's all the better for it. It really comes out just as nasty and unpleasant as it should, and it, it lingers. You, you're not going to forget this movie, and you're probably not going to be wanting to move, in, to move to South Central, Los Angeles afterwards. But, but yeah, the action, you know, it's got a couple of really effective chases, there's some shootouts, there's a little bit of, you know, physical fighting as well, and just there isn't really anything that couldn't at all happen. Again, it's just, there are some real lucky coincidences, but, you know. And in the action, you can also very much tell that Tom 
knows what he's doing, that he's been on the force for, you know, over a decade and a half. The... For, for the surprises that there are, there are admittedly also a few cliches, and at times you can kind of tell where the movie is going. However, this is a much better script than that of Harsh Times. It, you know, I don't know, I don't really want to badmouth David Iyer, but the people who wrote this might be, at least have been more experienced at the time than he was writing Harsh Times. Now, this is very much a pulp movie, and it is relishing in that fact. It's got some definite B-movie qualities. And I forgot to mention about the credibility, the music is also absolutely spot on. Every choice is just completely fitting with the environment and the tone of the scene. And I've I kind of already said, but I really want to hammer home, the acting is great. Everybody gives in a performance, performance that's great or better. And the, the people, the, the characters feel real. They're, they're three-dimensional. Even the supposed, you know, even some of the criminals encountered in this actually have more to them. They're not just, oh, they're criminals, obviously, they're bad people. You, you understand sort of who they are and maybe some of why, why they are what they are, and, and it's very consistent with that. And you really get into the various characters. May also heightening the, the the stakes and the the tension of it. The the drama is really compelling because you you feel like these are people you might encounter in real life. Maybe not encounter yourself, but you can see them existing out there in the real world. Again, especially in South Central. And that I believe pretty well covers it. But yeah, just fantastic, so much fun to watch, and holds up to multiple viewings. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.